Hey guys, what is up? It is Seaton here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to do the Ren of Fate solo. Now, I've done this across all my four characters, and the best way to actually solo the Chronicle, I find, is just in the best range DPS spec that you have. So on my Mage, I use Pyromancer, on my Cleric, I used Inquisitor, on my Rogue, I used Marksman, and on my Warrior, I used the new Reaver spec. So, and they all work really, really well. I managed to solo all of the bosses is one shot on normal mode and once you literally get a hold of the mechanics they become very very easy now one thing I just want to quickly point out to anybody using one of these specs it's really important that you have the planar attunement ability I believe it's called vampiric essence this will cause basically um, a percentage of your damage to be returned to you in health occasionally when you hit mobs and because your damage output is so high you're gonna get very sporadic anywhere between like like 2 to 10k heals, which basically mean that, you know, you can keep up with the minimal amount of damage in the fight. While we're also on the general intro bit, this is also an absolutely brilliant chronicle to learn and make sure you practice, because pretty much all of the mechanics in this chronicle are very, very similar to the ones in the raid, if not the same mechanic. So understanding how this chronicle works will help you understand how the raid works, and then when you go in the raid, you're going to know what to do, and you're going to be very, very good at the video game, and when loot drops, and it will, people are going to be like, oh, this guy's really good at the video game, maybe we should give him the loot because he knows how to play the game he knows how to press the buttons he knows how to move out of the bad stuff and people are going to shower you in epics for days so be sure that you learn this chronicle so the first boss is on gulok he is a large monkey crab type person and he is fairly fairly straightforward now, one of the first things you're going to see is there are going to be large expanding red circles. You need to drop whatever you are doing and move out of them fast. Simple mechanic. The next thing is he is going to demand a death. That means that basically you have 10 seconds to kill something or he's going to kill you. Just, you see the little scuttling ads around the outside of the room? Just quickly pick off one of those, use whatever burst cooldowns you have and get them down as quickly as possible. If you are looking to avoid more damage and... Uh, um, you know, make him take more time to do that, then you can wait till the end of the cast. Also, this ad is going to spawn. It is basically a shark ad. It needs to die as fast as possible. It also uh, channels an interrupt, which I believe is called spleen puncture or puncture heart. This needs to be interrupted, stunned, or debilitated. If not, then it will deal a large amount of damage to you and possibly kill you. So just be wary of that. The next thing is that ad just needs to die very fast, just because it's a pain in the ass, and if it casts the second one, then sometimes you can be out of stuff to use, depending on which spec you're using. So that's pretty important. The mechanic that we're seeing at the moment, I will come back to that in a bit. Apart from that, it's a fairly simple fight. It is literally just a rinse and repeat of everything we've seen so far. To quickly recap what we've covered so far, move out of the red AoE circles. When the shark ads come, focus them and interrupt their puncture ability. When Ungalong demands a death, quickly pull a small lead and burn it down as quickly as possible. A reminder, move out of the red AoE very fast, drop whatever you are doing and move out of it, or you will get hit by it, and you will take a crap ton of damage. Move out of the AoE, guys. The AoE is bad. Now, the mechanic that we've already seen once in this video, but I was too busy talking about the shark, is called Pressure Blast. Now, basically, Pressure Blast is cast three times in a row, and to counter each one, you need to open one of the cages and send one of the bloke grumps to the middle. So, basically, as soon as you cast that, run over to the first cage, click it, wait for the second one to go off, run over to the second cage, click it, wait for the second one to go off, run over to the third cage, and click it. So you'll see basically you send one of these bloat grumps to absorb each pressure blast and then you don't take any damage and thus you don't die from this mechanic. So that's quite important to bear in mind. You basically just have to run around to the cages and free them when you don't already have one in the middle. It may seem a bit confusing at first, but you'll definitely get the hang of it. 
at 20% he's going to break loose from the chains that he was on and he's basically going to like jump around to random locations and also gain a new cleave ability. For the new cleave ability just run behind him um, there's going to be the expanding AoE circles as well there's also still going to be the demand death but when he's on 20% you can really really just quickly burn him down. Just continue to move out of the AoE and congratulations you've won the game. The next boss is actually a duo fight of Waylos and Unter, which is basically a scaled down version of the Council of Skelf. Well, there's three of them in the raid, essentially. But in the Chronicle, there's only two. And the mechanics are fairly simple. There is an apart and near mechanic, and there is also a mechanic called Mania. Now, let's focus on the apart slash near mechanic for now. You'll see they either get a red or blue debuff on them. If they get a red debuff, it means that they need to be tanked away from each other. Basically one of them is always going to be stationary on this platform and you can just swap it out by dragging the other one over and uh, you know the other one is going to be fighting you. Now if they have the blue one they need to be within the blue circle and if they have the red one then a red circle will spawn and you need to take the other one out of that circle. If you don't do this quick enough then they're going to start pulsing AoE damage that is going to hit you for a decent amount. One of the things you need to be aware of is you need to make sure they are well out of that circle as you can see I took a couple of ticks in the pulse because he was kind of standing on the border there. The second mechanic that they have is as they are active, so as the one is fighting you and not just kind of chilling on the uh what I like to refer to as the chill zone or chill pad over there, um, they're going to get increasingly more angry, dealing more damage to you, and this can actually be reduced by running into the purple orbs. However, they don't really deal that much damage as it is, and you also do want to ensure that they die at the same time, because as soon as you kill one, then the other one is basically going to start spam pulsing that AoE that basically happens if you fail to the away or near mechanic and this can really have a detriment on a solo player if the other one isn't low enough. So as you'll see here, I've got them both to, uh, low health and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly pop this one off and fire a cinder burst at the other one. They die within like a second of each other. It was a beautiful kill. I cried in real life at how magical that kill was. I was pretty damn happy with that. So yeah, that was that boss. Fairly easy. Shouldn't take you too long to get to grips. The Drekkenoff of Fate is the third boss, and this one is slightly... I, I foresee this being slightly more difficult for some people, but all in all, it's still pretty easy. So basically, what you need to be aware of is that every 15%, he is going to do a portal phase, and this happens like so so often it's just absolutely ridiculous you're going to be hitting the boss for about 10 to 15 seconds and then boom portal now in the portal phase you need to race around very quickly and destroy all of these dragon eggs and if you don't then these blob ads are going to come into reality and if those blobs ads are into reality they are basically just a pain in the ass because they have like 500k health and they follow you around and make like put AoE absolutely everywhere. So that's kind of like the key thing in this fight. You need to get into those portals fast and it's gonna happen like every 15% until 25%. So you'll see I'm only fighting the boss for a few seconds and then literally I'm back in the portals. Now, a couple of pro tips to actually deal with this phase. So essentially what you need to do, the blob adds, you need to uh, basically get their eggs and destroy them before they can consume the egg and gain enough magical power to go into reality so they can be snared they can be stunned they can be knocked back uh, so basically whatever you have in your arsenal use it against them um, very tactfully so that you know they can't reach the eggs and that you have enough time to destroy all of the eggs before they hit reality um, we should probably talk about stuff going on in the Drakenoff phase but they're, they're so quick he basically just has a frontal cone ability Whatever you do, just quickly avoid that, and there are also going to be waves of fire emanating and kind of pulsing inwards and outwards from the boss. However, those aren't too much of a concern if you're playing a range spec. Just stay at range from the boss, and you'll be uh, you'll be pretty damn dandy. You don't need to worry about those too much. So yeah, it's just all about racing around as quickly as you can, getting those eggs, and then getting back out to new to Drakenoff. Actually, as soon as you get all of the eggs, then you're automatically ported out, so you don't even have to worry about getting out. So that's fairly easy enough. You can see um, 
frontal code is pretty pretty easy to avoid. You just want to ensure that whatever you're doing, you just quickly stop doing that and avoid the cone, um, or you are going to get hit by it. You know, same kind of uh, same story as the first boss with the expanding circle AoEs. You just really want to drop whatever you're doing and move out of it, or be prepared to take the damage from it. I mean, either one works. As you can see, I'm just going to quickly. Uh, Knock that ad back there to prevent it from getting there and just quickly root that one so that I can quickly get to the egg before it uh, gets there. As you progress into the later portal phases, there are going to be more and more ads. So just keep in mind um, that you, you know, you're going to have to deal with more. So be prepared to, you know, save abilities like uh, flicker or movement speed abilities to actually deal with that. Uh, the boss also does have an interrupt. This thing worth noting. You don't really see him much in this video just because he literally skips those phases insanely fast. Um, but he is an interrupt called Particle Pulse. Now, that is going to deal probably about 15k damage over about 5 seconds if you don't interrupt it. So ideally, you just want to quickly throw a cheeky interrupt in there. But that is pretty much going to be mainly your only source of damage aside from maybe a few auto attacks during these boss phases. And you do have plenty of time to heal up. Um, as you can see, health isn't one of the problems here. Now, when he reaches 25%, he's going to gain a new line of sight mechanic. You'll see there's a little pillar there. Whenever that goes off, I just want to quickly uh, hide behind that. It's very, very easy to see. Krug has made it nice and clear with kind of the red, circly, swirly pylon. So yeah, when that's about to go off, just quickly line of sight and congratulations. And yeah, you'll see there, I took a shit ton of damage from that firewall. I was testing it, seeing how much damage it does. It does a lot. Do not get hit by the firewalls, guys. Play range specs, they're OP. Good idea. And yeah, that boss is fairly easy once you get the hang of it. Finric is the last boss in the Renefade Chronicle. It's really good because this fight very, very closely mirrors uh, what you have to do in the raid. Now, there are water spouts. You want to avoid these, but the most important thing on this fight is Brutal Swell. Now, this will mean a wave pulses out from Finric, and you need to jump over this wave using your space bar. Now, the easiest thing I've found to do is just quickly take a few steps back from Finric, um, wait till the wave comes, and then jump over it, because the further back you are, the more kind of warning time you have as opposed to be like stacking right on the boss as the wave pulses from the boss so just take a few steps back jump over the wave and congratulations you have won that mechanic uh, there's also going to be another mechanic occasionally basically going to rain down fury upon everyone you just want to get inside any of these bubbles when they spawn and you will be completely immune to that damage there are also going to be water spouts throughout this phase uh do your best to avoid them. They are pretty tricky sometimes to avoid, um, but you want to try and avoid as many of them as possible because they do deal a kind of a moderate amount of damage. It's not too low, it's not too high, but it's something you want to avoid. There's also going to be kind of a red exploding AoE just randomly going off throughout the fight, and you want to do your best to avoid that. As you can see, taking a few steps back to jump over that wave, it's pretty damn easy. Now, the next mechanic is called Sacrifice, and it's not really something that you can solo unless you have uh, like really really good raid gear um, but yeah if you want to basically the kind of essence of this phase is you need to kill uh, four corals and then once you kill them you get the poison debuff and you run that to the toxic vats that you would have used to you know start the fight um, but basically, you can't, you don't really have the DPS and time to move while doing this as a solo player. So you kind of have to accept the penalty for failing this mechanic, which is basically that Finric is going to heal about a million. Um, and there's not too much you can do about that. But as a solo player, this isn't really too detrimental on normal mode. I'm trying to find a workaround on hard mode, but the focus of this video is in normal mode. So yeah, just kind of take that penalty to the face and continue to burn Finric. Um, and you know, it's easy game, easy life. As you can see, the uh, bubble mechanic has come back in, so I'm going to step inside one of them to make sure I don't get hit by the acid rain channel that's going on at the moment. And yeah, it's kind of just burned Finnerig down. The only other mechanic is that about 20% waves are going to be introduced into the fight. Um, now you want to avoid these waves as best as you possibly can because they do deal large, large amounts of damage. Uh, but, you know, I know a lot of people can find that overwhelming. At this point, just burn the crap out of the boss, avoid everything, keep your cool, and congratulations, you have completed the Red of Fate Chronicle. So yeah, nice work on that, buddy. Thank you for watching. If you want to find out more about 
about how to be good at the video game rift, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, apart from that, take care and have an excellent day.